On this episode, get a little special something that's right in this bag. That's not what you think it is. We're going to make a Big Mac. But instead of a normal Big Mac, we're going to make it gourmet. Stay tuned if you want to see how to make this. Okay, so we're going to take the Big Mac and we're going to upgrade. First, we need to talk about what the Big Mac is. Obviously, it's a hamburger from McDonald's. And we all know the jingle. I don't know the jingle. But it's, uh, what is it? It's as close as I can. Two all beef patties, special sauce, onions, lettuce, cheese, um, on a sesame seed bun. So we're gonna take all those ingredients, we're gonna work through them and kinda upgrade them as much as we can. But I wanna stick within the same vein of the ingredient and within roughly the same proportion size because we're just trying to keep what is a Big Mac but make a nicer version of the Big Mac or higher quality, whatever. I mean, this is just supposed to be a burger that's churned out fast, cheap, which is great for what that is, because, I mean, you go to fast food not for a gourmet meal. But we like this concept, so why not? Let's bump it up, just for the fun of experimenting. If you want to try this at home, we got a recipe in the description. Okay, so before we get started, let's just cover what generally is a Big Mac. Big Mac is three buns. So we got the top bun, middle bun, bottom bun. We have two all beef patties, 1.6 ounce in size. We have onions, lettuce, American cheese, pickles, and secret sauce. So what we're doing is we're going to try and tweak all those ingredients a little bit and just elevate them to a nicer level. Now we're not trying to go extreme with this because obviously you could get like some crazy expensive Japanese beef, get some crazy weird cheeses. The whole concept of this is I want to keep to what is the essence of the meal. To do that, we're keeping general sizes and ingredient types. We can shift around a little on preparation. So like, um, I think they're raw onions on burger, whereas I'm going to be doing uh, caramelized onions. But it's like things like that, nothing that's too wild and crazy. You want to stay within the concept, not trying to go extravagant here, something accessible that everyone can kind of try themselves. So what we've got here with our ingredients, we have a brioche bun. Instead of doing a sesame seed, I'm just going to do a brioche. I uh, thought about baking one with sesame seeds on it, but just felt like that didn't work quite the way I wanted it to. So we're sticking with the traditional brioche. And what I did to get our three buns is this is just another bottom bun. Grass-fed beef. Just kind of a little bump up quality, not necessarily the cuts. I don't know what the cuts it is, but I felt like just all beef and all beef, unknowing what the cuts are, was a good, nice upgrade. It's a little too flat. We need to up it a little. For a lettuce, we've got Swiss chard. Uh, a little fancier uh, than the iceberg lettuce, but nothing too crazy. It's an onion. We're doing shallot. And set of pickles. I don't know if you can tell, we've got cornichon. Cheese, we're doing a special Oregon cheddar instead of going with normal American. Just kind of up it a little again. For the secret sauce, it's normally mayo, which we're switching to a aioli. Uh, sweet pickle relish, which I'm leaving the same. I didn't really, couldn't think of anything that was an upgrade to that. Sweet pickle relish just is sweet pickle relish, so left that as is. Instead of a uh, yellow mustard right here, we're going to go with a stone ground mustard. Instead of distilled white vinegar, we're going with sherry vinegar, onion powder, garlic powder, salt pepper. Those last four are staying the same because there just isn't really much you can do. You can get kind of like a pink pepper, corn pepper or something, you're a little crazy, but it just seemed like it was more changing it than it was really adding to it. So, I mean, I did use uh, fresh ground pepper instead of just like stock pepper, so that's better. And this is uh, sea salt, so instead of just standard ionized salt. So we got a little bit of upgrade there. So you don't have to watch me cut and waste a bunch of time and just drag this out in an annoying way. We're gonna use the magic of cooking to speed the whole process up. So I'm gonna snap my finger and all the prep will be done. Three, two, one. And just like that, through the magic of cooking, we have our shallots uh, sliced. We have our cheese sliced. So I cut this into the four little pieces. I think that's about roughly, give or take, the size of a standard American cheese slice. 
Just kind of eyeballing here. We're not trying to make things perfect. Uh, shredded my lettuce, sliced my cornichons. So I went lengthwise instead of trying to do like the little coin medallion thing you normally get in a Big Mac. And I found that these are just too small. They end up being like little, little pimples all over the place or something. So there's nice slices. You can just layer them across and they work a little closer to the medallions. Got two 1.6 ounce patties. And the magic of cooking is just so magical because we also now have some paprika. It just came out of nowhere. It's just like magic. But it, magic of cooking new. You need paprika for your special sauce. So instead of being just a traditional paprika, we went with a little nicer Hungarian paprika. First thing we're gonna do is get the special sauce together. So we're gonna just mix these all up. So I've got a handy dandy little whisk here. So start by getting in that pickle relish. Just give it a Okay, whoop, don't slide off the bottom. And then we got our mustard. And we're just dumping this all in. Here is our sherry vinegar. Garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, and our salt and pepper to taste. And so we're just gonna whisk that all together. Gotta get it blended. Oh, nice. Just gotta. You start to see a nice little color change. It's all being cohesive. We're not going for perfect here. Just, just mixed up enough that we can be like, yeah, that's that's a sauce. And I would say, yeah, that's a sauce. Okay. Next on our to-do list is we're going to shape the patties. So right now I put them into basically balls. It's ground beef. They don't. It never gets perfect. It's using wax paper. No need for fancy burger presses. And a cast iron pan. I mean, really any pan or flat object will do. I'm just using cast iron because I'm about to use that for the onions. So we're gonna put down some wax paper and we'll put a patty right here. Put wax paper on top, stop throwing. Just take our heavy object and kind of rock it around a little. We're just trying to smash this nice and thin as possible. Oh, so this feels like about where it's going to go. Remember, it's probably going to be a little bigger on the side right now. That's fine because it's going to end up, uh, what do you call it? It's going to end up shrinking as we cook it. And I could make like a smash burger, but I didn't think McDonald's probably uses a smash burger style. I could be wrong. So I'm just going to smash it beforehand. Yeah. Get it right in there, nice and flat. These are some real thin burgers. Yeah. Oh wow, got this one really big flat. <laughs> and but again, it's gonna pull up. Probably over to this guy. Oh, I, don't know I don't know if I can get this up. Okay, good enough. There's our two patties. The next step, we're gonna start cooking. We're gonna get our surfaces preheated. So we're going to be caramelizing the shallots. We're gonna get a nice, soft, buttery, kind of jammy character out of them. And of course, we're gonna be cooking our patties. Let's flip over to the cooking station back there and get started. Okay, we're gonna get our onions started going, get the pan heated, toss in some butter. I'm going to grab our shallots. So. Spread this around a little. So right now I'm cooking on a duction cooktop. This is the uh, first time I've used this specific cooktop. I'm excited to try it out. So we're just gonna scrape our, um, our shallots. Yes, I'm calling them onions. Scrape my shallots in the pan. Get them all in there. Yep, yep, okay, fine. 
Good enough. Mix that up. So I've never used this before, so I might have my temperature off, but they said that this was a good temp for jams and jellies. So I'm gonna get my onions on the jammier side, so dog the shallots. Press to start. I'm just gonna try that up enough, but definitely don't want them to burn or brown too much. Just a little color change. Just some light caramelization. I think that's gonna be real nice in this type of burger. So we're gonna mix in a little seasoning, a little fresh ground salt, and some pepper. Just a little. Just enough to add some character to it. Not so much that we're dominating. Some light seasoning. Trying to smell real good. Okay, you can see that they're starting to change color a little. <clears throat> got a little brown added in to that purple. Okay, I'd say those are probably about good. You can see there's some browning in there. I don't know how easy it is to see on camera, but they're getting a little more translucent. Okay, so we've had our griddle preheating. Got to throw on a little butter. Just kind of grease it up a little. Got a little slickness. Got a little cake. There. It's soft. Let's uh get our buns prepped. So we'll take a good teaspoon. Oh, we might be more a teaspoon. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, let's do two. Let's try two teaspoons. That's a little better. Okay. Let's uh, throw down our pickles, cornichons in this case. And then we need a little lettuce, our shredded Swiss chard. Okay. And then. Our cheese goes just on the bottom. That's how McDonald's makes it. That's how the real deal's made, so that's how we're making it. Just put that on the one slice. We just need our onions, our patties, when we're done. Okay, so our patties should be a little browner now. Yeah, looking good. See what I mean? The shrunk is fun. We're gonna account for that shrinkage. There'd just be like nothing on there. We're not trying to make white castle, we're trying to make it done. These onions are looking good. I'm gonna pull those. I'll bring over our burger. Just kind of lay some of these on top. I'll lay them on top. I don't know the exact amount of onions and everything that ends up on the burger. I just know the patties, so that's what I'm rolling with. They look like they're about done, so I'm gonna stick that on the bottom. Just right like that, and right like that. Okay, so here we are with our completed Big Mac. Just need to assemble this all together, and we're ready to go. So, bun on top, cheese is on bottom bun. Set this down. And the stack's a little high, so we're gonna smash it down, get nice and to the usable size. And there we go. There is our Big Mac. We've got our Big Mac assembled, so let's go ahead. We're gonna cut right into this, see how we did. Let's get this nice cross section. Oh, look at that steam slipping away. Here we are. So I can't see that on the main camera, so let's just kind of go over here. Yeah, that is our Big Mac. Nice up and close. That cross section. Okay. So of course, food's only as good as it tastes. So. Mm. This is much better. I like the bun. Burgers are cooked nicely. 
I'm not a pickle guy, but I think cornichons add a nice little extra something. Or onions get some sweetness from the shallots. Lettuce feels like it's just there for filler, but I feel like that's what it is in the real Big Mac. I don't really get much cheese, but when we take to the real Big Mac, I didn't get much cheese either, so. Got both of buns right there. Overall, I'm really happy with how this came out. I'm gonna get to eating this Big Mac. Before that, if you like this video, and something you're into, hit that like button. Please hit subscribe if you want to see more of these videos coming up. You will try some other fast food options. Throw me a comment down below if you have something you specifically want to see me try. And otherwise, just come back next week. And I'm going to finish this burger.